Detroit Chamber Winds and Strings invites you to join us for our 40th season, where we rewind to past favorites, pause to enjoy great chamber music, and fast forward to what's to come. I'm Tim Weiss. I'm a conductor. I'm also an artistic advisor for the Detroit Chamber Winds and Strings, and I'm so pleased to be a guest conductor for this fabulous group. The audience is coming to hear a concert of chamber music. So the musical dialogue is intimate and up close, and that is always uniquely special. But I think one of the amazing things about chamber music is that the sum of its parts is always far greater than its individual parts, meaning that uh, in this concert particularly, uh, it can sound symphonic and full and large, but it can also sound quite transparent and intimate and quiet. And I think this concert actually gives you all of that. Uh, you'll be treated to the sublime music of Mozart, uh, music that we, that we know and that, that's in our bones in a certain way. And then you'll be dazzled by a world premiere uh, with music that references jazz in a certain way and is quiet and calm and soothing. And then finally this um, heroic, exciting piece by Ollie Wilson uh, in three movements that um, features the percussion in a certain way, in a, in a dazzling way, uh, and in, in some moments feels almost orchestral and huge and inspiring. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Frazier. I'm a composer and one of the composers featured on the Lovely Resonate project. Uh, and I am currently the visiting professor of composition at Oberlin Conservatory. One of the strongest tools a listener can have, especially a listener who's involved with um, new modern music, is to always have a very open mind um, and kind of an open aesthetic perception about what you're going to listen with or engage with. Um, music is vastly broad, vastly unique in, in a in different series of styles and, and genres. And I think going into something with sort of almost a blank slate lets you really kind of envelop the music and then eventually form it to be your own sort of response and reaction to it. You know, it doesn't always have to be necessarily a prescribed musical object or some sort of very like kind of program, programmatic music, but rather um, an event in which you're able to sort of realize the drama, the narrative, the, the conflict. Black Portrait really came through as this sort of sigh of relief, um, this relief, this kind of happy, expressive feeling that I felt um, not only at the end of my doctoral studies, um, but also sort of at the tail end of the probably the worst part of the pandemic um, in, in these last few months, you know, with isolation being a thing and me not really being around school and other people and other musicians um, and my dissertation studies, of course, um, everything sort of kind of uh, compounded and impacted my overall sort of like musical capability to write. You know, it was mostly overrun with other things. Um, so Black Portrait really was my first chance to, after all this stress, to finally be able to kind of just breathe and live and create music again, you know, meaningful, especially um, in a time where I felt like I needed it the most, absolutely. Um, the inspiration is quite simple for me. Um, it's based off of the formal structure of Charles Mingus's uh, self-portrait in three colors. Um, and if you don't know the tune, it's a lo lovely piece. Um, there's sort of like this intro, and then after the intro, there's basically one musical object. And the piece kind of revolves around re repeating that object two more times. So it's almost like you're looking at this um, sort of field of music through three different lenses. Um, so that idea of having some sort of introductory material and then a section that repeats you know, three times total, really resonated with me. And that's how I kind of came up with the overall structure and form for the piece.